message Sunday, 7, 48 p.m. <laughs> hey, Bob. Uh, it's me, Mickey Mouse. And, uh, did I just lose my tax haven? Hit message Sunday, 7, 51 p.m. Sunday, 8.34 p.m. <laughs> uh, Bob, we have a problem. I'm hearing that the new Obi-Wan show isn't doing well. I don't know whose kneecaps I have to break, but they won't be my own. <laughs> Message, Sunday, 9.04 p.m. Bob, pick up the phone. Bob, I promise I'm not mad. I'm just very disappointed in this year's earnings call. Rated A for autism. I realized watching the opening to Obi-Wan Kenobi that I loved Star Wars. I used to paint armor and collect film used pieces, as well as pieces that were cast in the original movie used props. But it's clear now, more so than ever, that Star Wars is a family member that's dying and you can't do anything about it, but watch the slow decline of health while you hope they will make some recovery with some miracle show or movie. But the situation is dire. The lead doctor is Kathleen Kennedy, and her assistant surgeons are no better. Kenobi is full of continuity errors, and it'll only get worse from here as the show goes on. Occasionally, they have flashes of classic Star Wars. Before the dark times. Don't ask questions. Just consume product and then get excited for next product. Before the Empire. It's proud to announce the Walt Disney Company is acquiring Lucasfilm, the global entertainment company, oh no, by George God! Lucas, and the home of the legendary no, Star Wars. No, God, Wars please, no! You no sold them. I sold them to the white slavers that take these things and... No! 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 Thanks to Raycon for sponsoring this video. Raycon earbuds are perfect for walking your dog and playing the theme song of your life while drowning out the outside world and all of its attempts to intrude upon your perfect moment in time. Raycons also come with optimized gel tips for the perfect inner ear fit that stays in place and it's comfortable. They offer 8 hours of playing time and a 32 hour battery life. Raycon's everyday earbuds look, feel and sound even better than ever. Raycons are priced just right. You get quality audio at half the price of other premium audio brands. It's no wonder that the Raycons Everyday Earbuds have over 49,000 five-star reviews. Raycons now come with awareness mode. Just in case you want to cut out the noise isolation and hear your horrible little children breaking that expensive vase you paid for. Just hold down the R for three seconds and now you're well aware of the madness that surrounds you. Click the link in the description or... Go to buyraycon.com slash it's a Gundam to get 15% off your Raycons today. But that's neither here nor there. Because people into Star Wars now are into Star Wars because shiny keys! The opening scenes of Order 66 bothered more people than the endless plot holes and retcons of the original story. Princess Leia's chase scenes felt like something out of a children's TV show or a YouTube channel with the cinematography fit for an episode of Rugrats. Yippee, hooray! Go, Princess Leia, go! Still kill me. <laughs> episode three of Kenobi brought Darth Vader into the mix. If you ignore the Princess Leia forgot that she met Kenobi and was saved by him as a child nine years later in the events of A New Hope, Years ago, you served my father in the Clone Wars. Now he begs you to help him in his struggle against the Empire. Then you can forgive that Darth Vader somehow forgot that he fights Obi-Wan Kenobi on Tatooine. I sense something, a presence I've not felt since... Apparently nine years ago! We meet again at last. The circle is now complete. When I left you, I was but the learner. Now I am the master. Only a master of evil, Darth. I'm sure 
they'll end it with Darth Vader thanking Obi-Wan Kenobi's dead somehow and not really looking into it because I don't know. Oh yeah, and Kenobi being scared of Darth Vader is an interesting take. He just starts running away from him. I, I don't know what Disney is thinking with destroying strong, capable male characters. Kenobi was ditching Darth Vader like I was ditching high school bullies. The guy who drops Darth Maul in a single stroke now is just scared to death. He's pissing himself practically. I made a comment on Twitter about how inaccurate the Darth Vader costume was. It's literally a mixture of the original series suits. Many people didn't care. And that's the problem. The prop department looked at the costume and literally said, eh, close enough, looks like Darth Vader. And most of the people watching the show say the same thing. Eh, close enough, looks like Darth Vader. Would you go to a restaurant and order a chicken sandwich and then be handed a fish sandwich and have the server look at you and go, ha, close enough, looks like chicken to me. And then you look at the chicken and say, well, from an angle it does come off golden brown like a spicy chicken sandwich, but it's fish, and then leave happy about it now. How is it we live in a world where Top Gun is being praised for keeping true to the original film and being a complete homage to the first one, but saying, hey, Star Wars Obi-Wan Kenobi is a mess, and then everybody else is like, ah, shut up, it's just Star Wars, you Quack. knuckle. Off the top of my head, here are the issues with the Darth Vader costume. No! Oh my god, it's an autistic moment. The dome is Empire Strikes Back slash Return of the Jedi, and not A New Hope. And it should be designed in the New Hope design, with a widow's peak. The faceplate features a small chin vent. That's completely a and and would be chronologically correct. So why is the dome from Empire Strikes Back, but the faceplate from A New Hope? But who knows? It looks like Darth Vader Don't ask questions. Just consume product and then get excited for next product. The glove stitching is A New Hope's pattern. The robe should be worn over the chest armor as in A New Hope, but it's worn under the armor like Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. That one make him stop! The chest armor itself is also painted in the Empire Strikes Back slash Return of the Jedi paint scheme, which is odd. It should be in the A New Hope paint scheme. Oh well, screw yourself. And it is also has a very interesting and distinct flaring in the shoulder armor at the front of it, which would lead me to believe that this was probably cast off of an older suit of armor that was used in most likely Return of the Jedi. The chest box wasn't supposed to have LEDs in it. This wasn't featured until ESB slash ROTJ. Obviously, it's in there to make people happy. They remember lights. Fine by me, I guess. You could let that one slide. The belt buckle should be at a 90 degree angle, slightly tilted. This is a small detail that most people won't pick up on, and I can't tell myself fully unless I can see it. The belt boxes appear to actually be accurate to a and h Unless I can get an actual photo of the suit that is clear and not a screenshot of the show, I can't say for sure. Oh, oh yeah, the cod piece? Oh my god, that's so far off, dude, it's not even funny. Like, literally, it's an eBay cod piece. Horrible. It looks like a diaper. I'll be nice to you and show photos that are very rarely shown outside of the Darth Vader prop community. But I've already been kicked out, so it doesn't matter. Listen, Disney, you could have hired me. You could have hired Gino from EFX. Hell, you could have hired Jordan Shalansky, who worked for Conan O'Brien. Any one of us could have done wonders for your accuracy. Did I say Jordan? Yes, sir. Jordan, you have some problems uh, with this uh, Darth Vader costume? Well, I just noticed that John had said it was an original, and then I also noticed that the chest plate doesn't have the Hebrew lettering uh, in these three areas that the original has, which led me to believe that maybe it actually is a replica. It, it probably is. Yeah. I see. So earlier when you said you think this is the original, I, you yeah, were lying I, to me. I, I, I was <laughs> Liar! But namely, hire me. I need the money. <laughs> the show as a whole can be summed up as Star Wars, Obi-Wan Kenobi, close enough. The attention to detail isn't there. It isn't there in the writing, it isn't there in the storytelling, and it isn't there in the prop department. It's a large mouthful of member berries. Member Darth Vader? Remember Obi-Wan and lightsabers, the Force? I mean, the show starts off showing you stuff that happened before. Remember this? Remember how good it was? The glaring obvious issues of the show are now being deflected in the best way possible. 
by screaming the fans are racist. The literal DEFCON 1 response next to screaming transphobia. The Star Wars fandom's racist problem, Moses and Grum, Obi-Wan Kenobi, and ongoing racist toxicity in the Star Wars community. Oh, God. I wish I was a progressive. All of my troubles could be solved by a few buzzwords. Disney sprang to Twitter, as light-footed as Jeff Bezos, popping out of bed and checking on his billion-dollar boat. We're proud to welcome Moses and Graham to the Star Wars family and excited for Eva's story to unfold. If anyone intends to make her feel in any way unwelcome, we have only one thing to say. We resist? What type of tweet is this? Oh my god, I'm so tired of just sanctimonious posturing to the point of where it now makes me sick. I wish I was a Twitch streamer selling gambling to kids. That's where the fun and the money is. Damn it. Moses Ingram's character is at times painful to watch. She appears to be a character shoehorned in, and luckily there was no second sister, so Disney had a loophole to exploit for a character that happens to know everything about Obi-Wan and Leia's connection. She knows who Darth Vader is. Like, how does she know? Don't ask questions. Just consume product and then get excited for next products. She apparently was one of the characters that escaped Order 66 in the opening scenes of the Jedi Temple's fall. Try not to vomit after me saying that. Obi-Wan is now old, weak, scared, and kind of stupid. It's been 10 years. I'm not who I used to be. Walk into the middle of the desert and bury it in the ground. Leia! No. Using the force for him in one scene was like an incredibly tough bowel movement without the aid of Metamucil. While Reva was literally parkour jumping from rooftops looking like a cat at one point. Oh, by the way, she kills the Grand Inquisitor, who we all know is alive in Rebels. He had one of the best death scenes ever. Yeah, what you've unleashed here today. <laughs> There are some things far more frightening than death. God damn! Not here. He gets stabbed by a strong, powerful woman of color. Because he's a bigot. And he's really white. <laughs> the Grand Inquisitor is an interesting villain who is featured heavily in Star Wars Rebels, which takes place after Obi-Wan, so the fact that he's killed two episodes in says a lot about the people writing the show. They don't have access to Google. He's an impressive lightsaber duelist with an extensive knowledge of the MIDI lightsaber fighting styles, known as forms Jedis. Interesting. It seems you trained with Jedi Master Depa Bilaba. How? Who are you? Bilaba's emphasis was always on Form 3 which you favor to a ridiculous degree. Clearly, you were a poor student. Him dying so easily to a lesser Inquisitor makes absolutely no sense. Like, he can feel all of these emotions from people, but he doesn't sense betrayal. That's a whole other story, though. He was also ruthless enough to use the remains of dead Jedi Masters to lure other Jedi Knights in, thinking they can save her. The thing is, the Grand Inquisitor should have been the one planning to catch Kenobi, not some new character no one's ever heard of before. That was a diversity hire, let's be real here. But it's Star Wars led by Kathleen Kennedy, and she cares more about diversity than she cares about good characters or clever writing. The Grand Inquisitor, which is already an interesting and well fleshed out villain, is reduced to a level of a petty Walmart manager keeping down the strong black woman who works part time. It's modern subversion to a T. Really, it makes no sense. This would have been a prime time for Disney to take a character that's well known already and doing something cool with him. Instead, they kill him and make him a footnote. It'd be like killing off Darth Vader and his. Oh, God, I just can't. And I'm sure people will say, Oh, that was a clone, you bigot. It wasn't the real Grand Inquisitor. In typical modern Disney fashion, they promote a show by leading with the word diversity. That's the first indication that a show is going to be a wet fart in your mouth. 
of nostalgia ruined by corn. Moses Ingram hit the interview scene by disavowing everything that happened before her. I'll borrow one Kenobi features most of Star Wars diversity, says Moses Ingram. Well, tell me, honey, how does it get any more diverse than it is? Obi-Wan is going to bring the most diversity I think we've ever seen in the galaxy before Ingram began. To me, it's long overdue. If you've got talking droids and aliens, but no people of color, it doesn't make sense. It's 2022, you know. So we're just at the beginning of that change, but I think to start that change is better than never having started it. What? No people of color in Star Wars before Moses Ingram. So, uh, Mace Windu, hello, Lando Calrissian, Lando in the 70s. Billy D. Williams was so smooth, the man wore half a cape. In fact, it was a quarter of a cape he wore. And none of us had a problem with it. Then, Lando finished it by polishing off a bottle of Colt 45 after every scene. <laughs> Hey, Billy, you free tonight? Works every time. But seriously, though, who else but Billy D. Williams could wear a quarter of a cape and look cool? They tried it in Han Solo with that guy who makes music. He's not a really funny comedian. I can't remember that dude's name. Childish Gambino? He looked like a damn fool. <laughs> where it featured a Randall Carizian that was a robosexual to make people today feel a little bit better about themselves because they want to hump airplanes and feel less nuttier than the average nugget of squirrel sh Rogue One didn't happen. That looked like it had a lot of diverse people in it, or maybe I'm just blind. Finn and Poe, they didn't exist. Who's Finn? Hmm? Who? If anyone should be pissed, it's John Boyega. They had us thinking he was a Jedi and then they just gave us Rey. Moses Ingram is on that Simu Lu energy. Remember him when he was running around talking about that movie and he was saying there were no Asian movie stars before him and there were no Asian focused movies before his big hit film, Tu Wong Fu, or whatever the hell it was called. It was something like that. Something in the Ten Rings? God, I can't even remember. The fact that he pretended Bruce Lee didn't exist disgusts me to this very day. Moses Ingram also discussed the level of backlash that other diverse cast members within the franchise have faced. It was something that Lucasfilms actually got in front of and said, this is a thing that unfortunately likely will happen, but we are here to help you. You can let us know when it happens, said Ingram. Wow, they're planning this. They're like, if anybody sends you a mean tweet, let us know. We'll go right to Twitter and we'll start like stamping our feet and screaming that everyone's a bigot. And it'll do a lot of good press for this show we're pretty sure is going to tank. <gasps> I think Lucasfilms told her that because let's face it, she was not burning up the screen with charisma. I'm sorry. A lot of people sit there and go, oh, it's because she's a villain. You know, there, there are villains you actually like. For now, however, Moses Ingram has seemed to have not received any backlash. Of course, the series is yet to be released. Dark foreshadowing. Yeah, nobody had any backlash to give her because we didn't know she was that bad. That's the thing. Everybody's like, okay, whatever. Ooh, this is bad. She sucks. And then Disney's like, oh my God, racist everywhere. And Twitter loves the idea of racist. Twitter loves it. They just love to run in anywhere and go, oh, we got to silence the hate with love. And it's like, it's not hate. She's just not good. And you're like, wow, wow, you're a racist. Basically, we're now at the point that if you think Reva sucks, or the show is bad, don't be racist. Remember all the backlash John Carlo Esposito got for being in The Mandalorian? Don't worry, I'll wait. That's right, it didn't happen. You suck, loser. You're a diversity hire, and you won't be loved or remembered for this acting role. Your days are numbered. In Star Wars, fool. Ayo, hey, Kenobi. You ain't fitting to run forever, white boy. Get back here, third sister, Obi-Wan Kenobi. You have now been converted into St. George Floydism of Star Wars. Are you happy? How the f*** alien no ebonics? Moses put out screen caps of some of the hate messages she got on Instagram. And I'm like, girl, really? Is this your first time at the rodeo? If you're a public figure online, you will get hate from somewhere, someone, somehow. Some worthless ass troll will say something terrible to you. 
the fact that this gets a light shined on it, something so many of us deal with, it blows my mind, really. Wait, the last one wasn't even that bad. They just called her a diversity hire. I mean, if you do an interview talking about diversity in Star Wars and you're a new character in the lore that's poorly written, can you be upset that someone comes out and says, hey, you're a diversity hire? I'm doing an interview about diversity in Star Wars and how it's a long time coming. Oh no, a troll called me a diversity hire. Oh my God. But seriously, you ignore sh this. Unless you need to draw attention away from the show being bad. Then Twitter's the perfect place to do it. The posturing's fantastic. Use a few messages from trolls to silence the fans who are not liking the series. Brilliant. Till you run out of people who care, which may be what you want. A legion of Eric Butts watching a soulless dribble. Mindless consumers constantly consuming a series that turns into a show that then gives one character another spin-off show. And then from that spin-off show, there's another character we give a show to. And it's never-ending garbage. Ugh, just good. There's nothing. I got nothing. Disney just doubled down. There are more than 20 million sentient species in the Star Wars galaxy. Don't choose to be a racist. Listen, I'm sure Moses is a lovely lady. But I think she sucks in the show. If you want to call me a racist, then call me a racist. I think her character is terrible. I think the way she plays the character is bad. I feel like I'm watching a black woman do an impression of DMX. If DMX was in the, uh, an Inquisitor, you know, call me crazy. This is Twitter mentality, bleeding off into other aspects of life. You can't say anything that's even common sense. You can't even voice an opinion because then you're just an ist or a phobe. You could say, I don't like pancakes much. And someone would run in and then start screaming, so you hate waffles, huh? Say something like, I'm not sexually attracted to transsexuals. Oh my God. And guess what? Someone will run in and start screaming, oh, so you're a transphobic, huh? If you're cis and you won't date trans folks, you're a transphobe. Hell no, till the no, 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 yeah, till the no. And you're just like, no? It's my preference. Wow, you prefer to be a bigot. And it's the same with Star Wars. <laughs> I hate Star Wars. Let it die, please. It's this extreme jump to make you the worst person on earth if you don't march in lockstep with the in vogue political belief or social narrative. Now let's keep in mind, Disney is notorious for pleasing China. They did it in the Avengers. They did it with the new trilogy of Star Wars. I'm surprised they didn't give Finn Villa Ligro to make him more socially acceptable in Asia. Oh, remember Disney cutting out the lesbian kiss scene at the end of Star Wars? Because they didn't want that in Big Bad China, baby. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. The stupidity began to flow uncontrollably on Twitter. God help us all. Here's a perfect example of people trying to explain that they're not racist, they just don't like the character. But on Twitter, if you like one black actor, you better like them all, or you're a bigot. Two black female Star Wars characters, one liked and the other disliked by the fans. Almost as if it's less about demographics than quality. This is literally the I have a black friend argument. Being racist does not refer to donning a white hood and being overtly racist. It also includes things like implicit bias. You can like some black characters and still be a racist. No, racism is when you don't like them all. That's racism. See, it's people who've never actually dealt with real racists that don't understand racism. I've dealt with skinheads. Not one point when I was having trouble with skinheads did they stop slapping me around and go, you know what, I love Michael Jordan. <laughs> You know, <laughs> I love Jumpman. <laughs> Picky tries to come in and it's like talking to a brick wall. I don't know why he wasted his time. Bitch, no. We like Lando. We like the lady from Fallen Order. The other actors and characters we love that are black. Everyone loves Vader's voice. He's James Earl Jones. You're basically calling us racist for not liking all black characters. I didn't call. 
anybody racist. I said liking some characters doesn't make you exempt from racism. Look at the mental gymnastics. But it does. Why would a racist who hates black people like a lot of black actors? Racism, noun, prejudice, discrimination, or antagonization, <laughs> antagonism directed against a person or people of a base. Someone take Webster's Dictionary from this asshole. Notice the or there. You do not have to hate black people. The whole prejudice is about them. That's not how it works. Prejudice, discrimination, and antagonism are all negative. I'm not prejudiced towards black people, nor do I discriminate against them because of that. And saying it's a bad character is not racism. Just because she's black, stop trying to twist criticism into racism. I said literally nothing about you personally, nor did I say, <laughs> nor did I say saying Reva is a bad character is racism. I made a specific point against specific arguments. Now, and then he just like keeps going on and on and on, and then more people chime in. And you realize it's an echo chamber of insanity. Wow, somebody who's actually reasonable. I like Reva personally, but I think this kind of criticism on people that don't is a bit unfair. I mean, almost the whole Star Wars fandom loves Mace Windu, Lando, Finn, and many others. Why would her race be the problem with her character? Then there's a rebuttal, but I was blocked from seeing it because the person who said something that was probably stupid has me blocked. So, whatever. Okay, but how could she know Anakin's Darth Vader? And stabbing Grand Inquisitor? Question marks? Maybe continue Quack. watching it in order to get the answer. And watch it comes back with a perfect response. Don't ask questions. Just consume product and then get excited for next products. Or watch the full product before jumping to conclusions based on 33% of the product. Watch it comes back again. This guy's a meme lord with another great one. Why are you shit my plate? How do you know it's sh It isn't even out yet. Literally, this is the tip of the iceberg. Everyone's screaming at each other with a few points coming across. And ultimately, the trap card of racism is always used. Twitter's view of racism is absolutely fucked. Much like social media sites. Remember when Bill Burr was being canceled for something on Twitter? And people on the site were literally saying, it doesn't matter if Bill Burr's married to a black woman, he's still a racist. And it could be coming from a place of racism and ownership of his wife. It was crazy. Bill Burr's own wife was coming in there telling social justice warriors they were retarded. Then you take into account the amount of people that were making valid points as to how Disney did absolutely nothing to defend Gina Carano. But of course, Twitterist, as I'm now going to start calling them, rebuked this observation by saying that she was a racist and she was anti-vax. And worst of all, she was a Trump supporter. There was a time when the Mark of the Beast was literally 666, but now the Mark of the Beast is anti-vax, Trump support, and accused of being racist or transphobic, whichever works. Gina took on her trolls like a champ, probably because Gina could actually beat the holy hell out of them. She used to be in the UFC if you forgot. And those people on Twitter wouldn't bust a grape in a fruit fight. They didn't protect her due to the high levels of trans mockery, anti-vaxxing, and tasteless jabs of Jewish people. She was also pro-Trump, supporting his mania. And at the end of the day, if you're associated with the mad, illogical, factually wrong, hateful bigots, then you're the same. Uh, Gina Carano was somehow in trouble with the trans crowd because she refused to put pronouns in her bio. She just refused. And people were mad about it. I'm not going to go through a defending Gina Carano thing because it would take all day. But it's just like, wh what madness is this? In my experience, screaming at someone that they are a racist when they are indeed not a racist and any post and or research you do will show those exact facts. And I'm sorry, these people are not educators. They are cowards and bullies. Say Black Lives Matter and post links and we'll stop. Oh, I see. So she probably had some support for police when everybody screamed to fund the police on Twitter. And her not putting pronouns in her bio is what made her transphobic. And oh my God. Jesus Christ, these people are insane. And for some reason, the media wants to court them. Us to Pedro Pascal Fariks, put your pronouns in your bio. It's important for the trans community. Pedro does it and understands. Us to Gina, put your pronouns in your bio. It's important to the trans community. 
Gina, stop bullying me. It's my right to be selfish. Gina Carano is over party. That's not my problem. It's yours. Jesus Christ. Absolute insanity. It's important for me if you do what I tell you. It's a dark time to be alive. I couldn't imagine being a celebrity now. We want you to play with your balls, tickle your ass with a feather while listening to Doja Cat. I, I don't care, Stu. I'm not going to go through all of Gina Carano's hate messages. I don't care if Data Re Racer needs the traffic. I can't take this no more. It's four in the morning. To top it all off, Ewan McGregor threw his hat into the ring for easy Twitter points. All of this is a huge red herring for a crappy show. But hey, I gotta pick the content cotton, baby. Ducatis don't buy themselves. This weekend, Star Wars fans made uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi the most watched Disney Plus original series premiere of all time. I got bronchitis. Ain't nobody got time for that. We stand with Moses. We love Moses. And if you're sending her bullying messages, you're no Star Wars fan in my mind. There's no place for racism in this world. And uh, I totally stand with Moses. <laughs> That's wonderful, Chog. The video I find kind of pointless. It won't stop assholes from being assholes on the internet. You're just bringing attention to a few douchebags, which we all deal with online. This will be spun into Star Wars fans harass Moses because they are all racist. When it's just a few trolls. We used to be able to deal with the trolls. You didn't feed them. You ignored them. Then a few marketing people thought the show isn't doing very good. How can we spin this? The fans are racist. And the rest is history. I'd be surprised if the people who sent her those messages were even Star Wars fans. Truth be told, most real Star Wars fans are like beaten down dogs. We watch our beloved franchise death drop itself into a progressive hellscape of bad storytelling, retcons, gay representation, and any other representation that needs be. I can't wait till we move on to the transhuman movement. Because I want to transition being a human, it sucks. While some corporate slaves tell us, Star Wars is for everyone. Yeah, no shit, but this is bad. The Force is female. It's like talking to a parrot that only knows diversity buzzwords. And if you dare voice dissent for something you think is bad, they immediately label you a supervillain. Mike from Red Letter Media explained how Star Wars Picard made him dislike the next generation. And then it hit me. I feel the exact same way about Star Wars. Back and enjoy my TNG. I am fully capable of doing that, yes. I'm starting, starting to change. Really? Where, unfortunately, this, this knife in my heart <laughs> has, has plunged too deep. <laughs> and I see, I see, like, pictures of Captain Picard from TNG, and, like, I, I cringe a little. And I'm just, like, I just, like, I'm done with it. I don't mean to be dour here. No, I mean, I think it's fair to be dour because it's, it's pretty dour. This is the this is the death of an old friend. Yeah. You know, yeah. This is how most people feel about Star Wars right now. Cuz I I don't give a shit about Star. I haven't given a shit about Star Wars for like 20 years. And now I'm going through that with Star Trek. Like the, the this okay, this is what it's like when that thing you love is just, it's dead. It's dead. I must have seen the original trilogy hundreds of times. I used to quote Jabba the Hutt which I think he actually spoke Navajo, but they played it in reverse. But that's neither here nor there. That's a Star Wars geek reference. Kawis kachu kawawuki. This show sucky sucky. <laughs> now I won't sit through the original Star Wars movies. And sitting through Kenobi requires great deals of strength, pausing, and doing something else. What was my point again? It doesn't matter. Don't ask questions. Just consume product and then get excited for next product. And if you don't like the next product, you're probably a bigot. Well, final epilogue. The bloom is off the rose. Episode 4 of Obi-Wan just came out and people are not pleased. Even the media is turning on Obi-Wan. 
Well, I guess the diversity shield wore off. Fiddlesticks. Obi-Wan Kenobi Episode 4 has me wondering, what the f*** are we doing here? Me too, Brad. Actually, I know what I'm doing there. I'm tormenting myself. Even IGN, one of the biggest shill sites on the planet, wrote, Obi-Wan Kenobi Episode 4, a review in Old Hope. Hopefully it'll end soon and Disney stops doing this. Jobby Harold re revealed that Leia was kept secret. Of course it was, because if people found out beforehand, they would have told you what an idiot you are. Obi-Wan was guarding Luke. At the most, there should have been one episode of Obi-Wan Kenobi, like, saving Luke from something. And that should have been it. Instead, you made the whole show the Leia show. Because Kathleen Kennedy. That's the best way I could put it. Because she doesn't know what the hell she's doing in Star Wars. This guy doesn't know what he's doing. Um, the show sucks. I don't recommend it. You want a good Star Wars show? Watch one of the animated series. The Bad Batch. Clone Wars. Um, Rebels. Rebels is light years better than Obi-Wan. This is hot, wet garbage in your mouth if you're a Star Wars fan. I just, I'm trying not to curse profusely, but this show is absolute trash. The lack of knowledge of the source material that they're even writing is staggering. What is the point of hiring people who don't either A, know the lore, or B, respect it, writing a show? Like, who thinks of that? Would you hire a dude to work on a car that doesn't know how to work on a Ford motor? And the answer is no, because he'd screw it up, you idiot. I thought I'd subvert expectations with car repair and pour oil directly into the air filter. 